everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You got great news, great interviews, great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Before I get to my guest today, please hit the like and the subscribe button so you get these great interviews. Without further ado, I bring to you Ven from Venray. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. That's awesome. Um, we won't keep this very long, uh, kids, because I was just talking to Ven, and it's uh, a travel night for them. Um, we'll get into who they're touring with. Um, I just wanted to let you know um, that I was looking over the charts, and you were charting um, in the same drift with your last, your re recent single, Each and Every Day. Um, you were in the uh, same area as uh, Greta Van Fleet. They were in the same area. Yeah, uh, we, we leapfrogged them last week. That <laughs> that says a lot, man. I mean, that really says a lot. Um, you're not rookies. You've been around since 20, uh, 2009. Five studio, four studio albums. Uh, uh, yeah, four, uh, four indie LPs. Yeah, and then our debut EP with Pavement Entertainment, which is you know Sony Orchard. Right. So yeah, you guys have been around the block a few times. Um, now yeah. the recent EP has got six tracks on its Purgatory Awaits, correct? That's correct. Yes. And tell, my, if they're new uh, to the channel, tell these uh, kids who um, drummed on the tracks, uh, aside from your, your yeah, drummer, well, who guessed it we, on it. Um, we've gone in the studio and recorded some songs. You know, our last tour was the last quarter of 2019. So in, in January and February, you know, we were on fire. And... Uh, we went into the studio and recorded, uh, I think, about uh, 15 songs. And then, of course, March came and the pandemic and everything shut down. So mm -hmm. um, between those 15 songs, I had another, you know, 45 demos. We, I now have almost 70 demos that Jason and I wrote between right. March of 2020 and, uh, and January of this year. So I said, uh, Pavement wanted to go with a six song EP. So I sent them about 19 songs, uh, and they picked six. Uh, two of them, uh, have my drummer, Victor Singer on them, uh, Show Me and, uh, ATM Machine. But this was April of 2021, a pandemic, uh, all these countries had different rules and yeah. my drummer's from France. And at that time, they wouldn't let uh, any French citizens leave the country. And all the studios were closed, so he couldn't do the drum tracks remotely. Um, and it was still kind of sketchy in L.A. We could go and record, but you couldn't have more like three people in there at a time. You know, everybody had to be masked. So I called Perk, uh, you know, Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction, the drummer. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. And, I said, hey, Perk, uh, we just got a record deal, and my drummer, you know, they won't let him out of France. I got I got to have somebody drum the record. I figured I'd ask you first, and he was like, absolutely, man, let's session. And so uh, the current single, you know, he, he drummed four of the six songs. But the current radio single each and every day, that's Stephen uh, Perkins on drums. And he changed the intro. Oh. Made it a better song. He told me, he goes, I went Slipknot on it, you know. And uh, Yeah, I hear that. Uh, Phenom producer and engineer Malcolm Springer out of Nashville. Mm -hmm. All the Matchbox 20 hits, so many. Yeah, yeah everybody knows uh, he, he mixed it for radio. So between uh, Perk on drums and Malcolm Springer mixing it, you know, I think it came out uh, to be a pretty great song. And it's doing it's doing really well on radio. Yeah, and, and uh, you're saying that um, tomorrow the uh, the chart uh, rankings come out once again. Yeah, we're actually sitting uh, after three weeks at 41 on the new SMR top 50. Uh, that's the new chart. You know, the Billboard yeah. BDS top 40 uh, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Our first single off the record, Show Me, hit 16 on uh, the Billboard BDS Wow. Top 40. Uh, we're at 41 right now on the chart, the new chart, which is the SMR rock chart. Yeah. Uh, it'll come out tomorrow about, uh, you know, noon Eastern time. So, so we will 
absolutely tomorrow have two songs off this six song EP that are top 40 hits. Wow. I mean, that's, I was just going to say, oh, the six songs already have two. So you're going to release the other four just to make it, uh, what is it, uh, a syntwet? What is it, six? <laughs> you know, uh, I think we could release another one or two and probably crack the top 40 easily. But uh, our plan is to finish this tour. Uh, and then uh, Malcolm and our manager, uh, Bob Chaparty, the radio promoter, uh, Eric Baker, you know, they work a lot with Universal. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I don't know if I'm going to option out with Pavement and sign with Universal mm. or uh, do another uh, EP with Universal or LP with, I mean, EP with Pavement or uh, a full-length LP with Universal. The only thing I do know is that Either way, we'll be going to Nashville, and uh, Malcolm Springer will be producing it and, and mixing it. So we're going to see what God planned here uh, probably before Thanksgiving. Right. I mean, that's awesome. Um, and like you said, you have a lot, a big catalog of music to choose from right now. Sex Toplet was what I was thinking of. Yeah, Sex Toplet. Sex Toplet. Um, yeah, the, I think that's... Uh, when you got two top 40 hits off a six song EP, I think if you push it further, that's just uh You know what? That's a good point. You don't want to uh, push the boundaries. So, yeah, that's a pretty damn good ratio, man. Um, before we get into who you're touring with, um, just uh, like, you know, Gabe's in the band and there's uh, Jason. And um, it's funny. I was going to make a funny joke, a drummer from a singer, a singer from a drummer. But, I mean, see, that's the joke. There you go. <laughs> so, so you got Gabe. He's from Brazil, but uh, you have also Jason Wolvac, who um, everybody will be familiar with. Um, and I found it interesting. I didn't realize this part. He was a uh, Juliette Lewis, uh, the actress, and the, and the licks. That's where he's primarily known from. Yeah, he played uh, bass for her. He's an incredible bass player, guitar player. Mm. So he played bass for Juliet Lewis and the Licks for about three years, helped write a couple of her hits. Uh, but he plays guitar and writes some music for Ben Ray. I write all the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, and we're a four-piece. So, yeah, we got Gabe uh, Masca from Brazil. Uh, he's a U.S. citizen now. And then our, our drummer's from Paris, France, Victor Singer. And, uh, boy, you know. The hell of a lineup, best lineup I've ever had on stage. These guys can play. Well, you must be able to play because tell uh, tell the viewers. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're aware with your rankings right now. But uh, and you've been around. Um, who were you on tour with? I think you started uh, first show was what Saturday. Um, yeah, August 12th was the first show, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was in Grand Island, Nebraska. And then last night, uh, we played uh, uh, the, I forget the name of the venue, actually. But uh, it's a, a, it was a huge uh, venue. And actually, uh, L.A. Guns is on tour. Uh, and so they're doing uh, three of the shows with us and Buck Cherry. So, yeah. Uh, they, they played with us last night, which was great because, you know, our last tour was with L.A. Guns. So I think it was an awesome show for the fans because we're kind of a current epic alternative rock band. Yeah, that's a, uh, that, yeah. you coined that phrase. Yeah, we are, that's what we are. And, you know, L.A. Guns is, you know, top-notch 80s band. Yeah. And then Buck Cherry, a 90s band. So. Yeah. You know, those people got their money's worth. It was one hell of a show. And so we have two more. The next two are with L.A. Guns. Uh, the first one at Grand Island, we were direct support. Uh, so after uh, these next three shows with L.A. Guns, we'll be direct support for the rest of the tour with Buck Cherry. Wow. Well, you, I'm sure you know Josh pretty well from um, yeah. from the area. That That's great. Um, I want to speak about your songwriting, which is um, each and every day, and obviously government overreach. Uh, overreach. Um, right. It's, it's it's worse in my country than than yours. 
these days, if you're aware. Oh, my God. What country are you in? Oh, I'm in Canada. I'm actually, I can see your yeah. country. Uh, I'm on the border with Michigan and Ontario. Okay. But, um, yeah, yeah. Canada, Canada is... Uh... Canada and Australia really put the put the screws to to their people. That's for sure. You're so right, and you're you're so well, well read for knowing that because um, basically, uh, without getting too political on the show, because uh, uh, you know, YT will shut it down. Um, yeah, Canada and Australia are kind of um, the uh, the cookie cutter what they're they're using. So, anyways, yeah. So um, Fans are in for a treat when they see you. Uh, you said you have a show tomorrow and then the next night's with L.A. Guns. Yeah, uh, we played with L.A. Guns last night. We we're going to play with them again uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in uh, I believe, uh, hold on, let me take a look here. <laughs> you know, I've been on tour for a week and it's so hot, you know, you, you forget where you are. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be playing the Butler, uh, arena, uh, tomorrow night with guns, uh, and Buck Cherry, and, uh, the next night in, uh, Mankato, Minnesota at the Betterstone Amphitheater with L.A. Guns and Buck Cherry, uh, and then, uh, we'll be heading, uh, We'll be direct support after that. We'll have two shows in a row near Chicago, the uh, Arcada Theater, which is one of the best venues in the country to play in St. Charles, uh, Illinois. Yes. Yeah. You know, followed by the Des Plains uh, Theater in Des Plains, Illinois. You know, both extremely close, close to Chicago. I'm thinking those are probably going to be the best two shows of the tour, I think. I'm sure they're all going to be uh, equally as good um, as per. Yeah, I know what you're saying some app, some uh, venues have a different atmosphere, and um, some have you know, but they're all going to be great shows. Now I'll put links underneath Ben um, to the shows so people can check it out. Um, question for you before I let you go: um, First of all, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? <laughs> the opposite of unsubscribe? Yeah. <laughs> Can I cuss on your show? No, no. Yeah, you can. Yeah, dude, Fuck yeah. You can. You can. Totally screwed, I guess. But I'm sorry. No, the opposite of unsubscribe is subscribe to my channel. Yes, I know, but that was too... Oh, subscribe to your channel. It was too obvious. I, th I thought you were throwing me a qu uh, trick question. I, I have. You know what? You're not the only one I've uh, kind of made them... They're thinking really deep. Like, what the fuck does he talk, was he talking about? Well, Somebody... you know, we we have 678,000 real fans. I mean, active, real fans, right? Yeah. So we're going to share the heck out of this. They're all going to know right who you are. Yeah. Who's your favorite Canadian band, musician, or artist? You know, Biff Naked. Yeah, and you got to go back to the 90s when she kind of broke out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I love myself I to think, death, right? I think Biff Naked is just amazing. And, uh, I've interviewed so far, Biff. I, I, you know, I mean, in my, you know, from the 90s on, I mean, obviously, Brian, like Brian Adams was yeah. uh, from Canada, and I obviously love him. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for your listeners... There may be people there in Canada that don't even know who Biff Naked is. And, uh, well, I was very uh, impressed that you said Biff Naked because I usually get, out of the 110 interviews I've done, it usually will be, well, 50% will be Rush. Just because if I put the guy in the right. spot or girl in the spot, Rush is known in Canada, right? So I get Brian Adams a lot. I get Triumph. I get those. But what, I've interviewed Biff Naked, and she's great. And so that's awesome. Because she is a great talent. I used to go up to Vancouver a lot. So when she when she was breaking big, you know, back in the in the nineties, mm -hmm. you know, I went to a few of her shows, and uh, you know, I thought to myself, you know, that girl's a star, and I still feel that way today. I love her her her. I love her music. I I just love her performance, and uh, I think. Uh, Maybe she should have been a lot bigger than she got, you know. But you well, just never know how what's going to happen in this game. 
Yeah, yeah. For and for some reason, Canadians have a tougher go at it than than uh, our American uh, neighbors, our brothers and sisters, uh, such as yourself. Um, I don't know if the challenges are just. I think the way uh, Canadians are passive in marketing, but uh, you're right. I think if she maybe was predominantly down in uh, in the LA circuit, um, she would have been maybe more international. But yeah, but either way, she's she's great. I love her. Awesome. Um, your three quarter of a million followers and viewers are going to love to hear about that when you share this, of course. Absolutely. I share everything I do with great people like you. Oh, thanks, man. So I'll let you go. You guys are going for dinner. Uh, where can people go get your merch and uh, check out your stuff? Well, on our website, uh, you know, www.venray. Uh, it's spelled uh, a little different. Uh, v is in victory. V -E -N. Yeah. yeah, V E N R E Z uh, the band dot com, and just on the header click uh, shop, and we've got uh, a lot of great merch, and they can they can buy it there, and we'll ship it right to them. Right on, and I'll put below as well links to the new single and everything. Um, once again, man, thank you very much for the interview, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the tour. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great one.